kits and we've got it all prepped and we've shipped it into Amazon, we launch the products. And the way we can launch, there are quite a few different ways to launch products. And Ben, if you're stealing this, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get you. <laughs> no, actually, Ben is on here. I, I actually want Ben to talk about this, uh, you know, because he's actually extremely, extremely good at this. Uh, and I've learned so much from him, uh, I cannot even begin to tell you uh, how much I've learned. But there are quite a few ways. We could de dedicate entire webinars on any of these subjects. So I'm going to go through this pretty quick. There's a few different things. Self-promotion is the easiest, quickest, and cheapest right off the bat. Everybody has a circle of influence. Most people's circle of influence is in the hundreds of people. If, you, if you're on Facebook and you have people in your Facebook circle, you've got it. Everybody has friends. Most of us have friends. Most of us have family. Some of us may not. And if, and if you don't, man, just click that friend button a whole lot. I, <laughs> that's a joke. <laughs> uh, yeah, you don't, hey, the cool part is you really don't have to have friends to launch products and make money on Amazon or any sales channel at all. So don't think you have to have that to do this. But your circle of influence, the people that you know, and doing self-promotion do help out. Generally, what you're trying to do is get a couple of few sales up front and get yourself some reviews. Um, like I marked here, you know, get 20 reviews real quick, 10, 20 reviews real quick, uh, and hopefully some sales on that. And then you can start a paper pay-per-click campaign. Why do we want the reviews? One thing, social proof. Amazon reviews are used for social proof. People will go into Best Buy to buy something, and they'll go look at the reviews on Amazon for that product to de decide whether or not they're going to do it. It's like Yelp for physical products. And so it's a really good to get those reviews uh, because then people feel more comfortable. Also, there's a book on called The Psychology of Selling, a few other books on human psychology that talk a lot about uh, how people act. And I, I call it the herd mentality. No, there's a, very, there's a very small subset of people who like to be the first to buy something. The majority of people will buy because other people are buying. They don't want to be the first one to buy it because they don't want to fail or have it be a problem and then feel bad because they, they didn't do it. They want to see if other people have gone there first so that they can feel comfortable. And it really is just a big comfortable feeling. So getting the reviews is real important before you start advertising and marketing. You want to get these reviews up, get it going, get those things happening, and then you're going to start your pay-per-click campaign. I am, you know what? I pay-per-click is a, is a webinar all upon its own, and we will do that in our mastermind. There are a lot of other people who talk about it. I talked earlier about it. Go check out Brian Johnson. He's an awesome boy, uh, super good. He's got a great set of videos that are free right now. He's got videos on a webinar. I've got videos of him doing some stuff in our mastermind in December of last year that will blow you away. And the one-on-one -on -one coaching he did for the people who were there was phenomenal. Um, he's great. I would rather let him teach you how to do pay-per-click, but what, all I'm saying is get your reviews first, use self-promotion, and then begin your pay-per-click campaign. There's a lot of ways to do it. I'll be honest. The way I did it, I find my own keyword Google. I use keyword.io. I use merchant words. I've used several different keyword tools. I, I pick out the ones that have the highest volume. I look at the way I want to structure it and then I begin a pay-per-click campaign. Uh, some people do auto campaigns uh, and they do that. that that's great um, and I'm sure that it definitely is helpful. Uh, I may or may not start a, a product that way. Just, uh, just depends. In the past I hadn't. Uh, I have been doing some of that here recently based on some things that I've learned from Brian uh, and we're testing on that stuff. But for the most part I've had some pretty good luck my uh, ACOS and things like that haven't been uh, too far gone, and uh, and we're still very profitable. Um, and then there's a something I call the, the product launch launch functions. And if you're and if you're just starting out, and this is probably higher level stuff. This is this is stuff that you would get in our masterminds, right? 
so you know a, a quick set of reviews from your friends and family doing that self promotion getting some reviews you can do that in Facebook it is it's just that simple and then doing a pay-per-click campaign that, that's not too far advanced if 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 you think that's too far advanced then you're making it too hard um, it's not and there's plenty of places to get help to set that up um, it, it's it's only challenging the first time because you haven't done it and then once you've done it a few times it becomes very simple and you can repeat it and do it over and over and over again and we have people on this webinar right now that I know that do that and can do it because I work with them um, so if you're just starting out you're probably going to also look at using like a launch partner uh, like a viral launch Casey Gauss over at viral launch is a great guy good person very helpful does a lot of uh, a lot of good for a lot of people and actually he just posted out some really cool stuff he found out about the latest the latest uh, um, update on Amazon and some great things that he found out uh, you might use a review kick Thomason you may you may do some things like that to help you go um, if you're a more advanced uh, seller if you've been around for a while uh, you you may be uh, establishing your own launch programs um, you may uh, be getting uh, you know I know that you know my early products were filled by merchant because most of it was food and Amazon doesn't do perishable food very well at all I mean canned goods that last 47 years and don't care if they're in the hot warehouse work there but uh, fresh stuff doesn't and I sold fresh food on Amazon um, and so it, it just it, it isn't shelf stable and I still do I sell chocolate and it's not shelf stable and it doesn't go into Amazon so we do fulfilled by merchant and uh, when we did fulfilled by merchant I get all the customer information including uh, their Amazon marketplace email not you know I don't get their 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 uh, personal email but I do get their Amazon marketplace email and even today FBA you can still get all the customer information you just don't get their email address there are ways to get the email address by far that they're they're available out there uh, most people have four e the average is four email addresses per person in the in the uh, in the United States uh, or maybe that's global I'd have to double check that one but I know the average was four and so uh, it's not very hard to do that and get the customers information if you have their phone number their address and their name uh, it's actually really easy to get that information so you can you can start to take your customer base the people who've bought from you and then what I am doing is asking them to join our thanking them for being a customer and asking them to join our review club by the way you don't need their personal email address to do this you can do this through the Amazon email address uh, there is nothing wrong in Amazon's mind with thanking the customer giving them an update and asking them to join the review club as long as you don't ask them to buy products off of Amazon and I probably wouldn't want to send out uh, the 3,000 customers that I have uh, in one shot they would get really mad at me uh, and probably shut me down but you know if you're just doing onesie twosies and you're using maybe something like uh, feedback genius or something an autoresponder to do that um, that works really well uh, and the more and the reason I do that is because you know we talk about branding and I wrote a a blog or actually I post on the Facebook group uh, the difference between branding marketing and sales uh, because they are different if you if to develop a brand you have to take mind share away from the cut uh, to the customer um, mind share that means when people think of uh, you know coca-cola has mind share because everybody in the world knows who coca-cola is we all know what that can looks like we know what that brand and that logo looks like we know the jingles at Christmas and we can't wait for the Christmas uh, ads to come out everybody knows that you know soup is good food because Campbell's told us that in the US we all know uh, the golden arches because McDonald's created that brand and then pounded it down our throat using eBay we're using advertising that was meant to do only one thing create that brand and own mind share I mean it you can akin it to subliminal messaging it cost a lot of money 
to build and take mind share and build a brand. But other ways you can do it are by going above and beyond for your customers. Um, Jeff, what's the name of that shoe company, the online shoe company that just has, they're like, they have the best customer service in the world. That would be my good friend over at Tony Tony Shea's company, uh, Zappos. Yep, that's it, Zappos. And so th they have built this brand over time by having the absolute best customer service in the world. And you know, since we since we don't manage the customer service aspect as much as you think you do, you really don't on Amazon. Amazon dictates what you do uh, more than anything else in that space. Um, that that that's a little bit more of a challenge. Amazon is known for its customer service, not us. Um, when people buy from us on Amazon, they, in their mind, are buying from Amazon, not from you or from our brand. To help us get Mindshare and to build that brand, and this is high-level, super high-level stuff, guys. This is the kind of things we work on in our year-end master planning when the Million Dollar Club gets together and, and we, we, we have people that are special invite only. You, you can't get into this. You can't buy your way in. You have to be invited. Uh, and you have to meet minimum requirements to get in. But these are the things we talk about, uh, about how do we really get that fan, how do we build fans, fanatics, out of our brand in Amazon. And the way I looked at it, and one of my techniques is that uh, I'm going to give them I, I want to give them the first opportunity for that freebie, for that review, for that stuff. You know, those are the things that over time, as your business builds, and you may not be able to do that today, and you may not be able to do that tomorrow, but eventually, as your business gets that big, and you have this kind of customer base, you can start to look at these type of things to help you make your business grow. Because long term, the goal is to not have Amazon be your only source of revenue in your business to build an off Amazon brand because that is extremely valuable and that creates long-term security and massive wealth and again you may not want that but these are kind of the things that we get into when we go into high high-end stuff so I hope you guys have enjoyed it there's a you know uh, some of you may know may not know uh, I go to China three times a year now uh, I don't. I don't use Alibaba at all, actually, uh, unless I'm helping somebody else. One of uh, one of our team or one of the people in the in the family who uh, who are in our kind of our business family here uh, that asks for help and wants me to look at something for them. I may I may do that, but uh, I don't use it anymore. I go to Amazon. I go to China at least three times a year. That's the way we have it scheduled right now. It's generally based on the buying seasons. Uh, there's a specific reason I go and the dates that I go. Going earlier, not a benefit. Going later is detrimental. Um, so it's basically a seasonal-based uh, which works extremely well. Um, and what I've done is start taking people with me. And I take them with me so that I can take them step-by-step step through the process. See, you've just been on this webinar where I talked about the process, right? 